You're listening to Dental Student Vibes, where it's all about the good vibes. We've got an amazing guest on today, Dr. Brian Jankowski. Uh, he's a recent graduate, and he just went from new grad to practice partner in three months. What do you think about that, Anthony? I think that's uh, something that is pretty impressive, to say the least. Pretty, pretty impressive. So uh, we go through his whole dental school journey to uh, his time as an associate to his uh, new position as uh, partner of the practice. So really uh, excited for this interview. I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, As always, follow us on Instagram at dental.student.vibes. And of course, thank you for listening. Dr. Brian Jankowski with us. Dr. Jankowski, how are you doing today? I am great. Thank you so much for having me on this. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We've been looking forward to talking to you for a long time. I know you've been on several podcasts. What I know you're on Dr. Costas' uh, Dentalpreneur. What other uh, podcasts were you on? Uh, Dentistry Uncensored with Howard Ferran. Oh, yeah. That's the big one, huh? Yep. So can you kind of walk us through... Uh, your whole dental school experience from the very beginning, and then we'll kind of just move down the timeline here. Yeah, so dental school was great. Uh, went to Arizona, A.T. Steele University, and kind of hit the books hard, just like everybody during those first two years. Uh, had a daughter. I went out there with my wife, had a daughter during the first year of dental school, which was you know an extra piece to the puzzle, but it was definitely worth it. Um, started going, got to third year, and I was just ready to hit the ground running, and it, it just picked up a little bit slower than I anticipated. A lot of cleanings and things like that, but it was still useful just to kind of get used to the patient and how to move around the chair and things like that. Um, but I actually had a, a real long talk with my wife. I considered who, stepping out and going back to, to college coaching, and I wanted to pursue college coaching. She convinced me not to do that, which was <laughs> definitely for the best. Um, right. <laughs> Then uh, finished up and fortunately had a really great experience and, and good um, teachers and, and mentors along the way that really pushed me and, and put me in a position where I feel comfortable day one coming out of dental school and practicing in a private practice. Right, right. So let's uh, let's dive deeper into your dental school experience. So you said that you really started to buckle down third year. What, uh, what did you start to look into? Were you really focused on clinical? Did you start looking at... Uh, best business practices? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I actually, so third year, what I mean by buckle down is I, since we finally started being in clinic more, um, we get a taste of it in our second year, but you really start being in clinic your third year. So I really knew that was what I needed to focus on to be able to be ready day one coming out of dental school so I could um, feel confident and comfortable not pursuing a specialty. Um, and I know that a lot of people, and I think the GPRs and AGDs and specialties are great. Right. But my, my goal was to be prepared enough not to truly feel like I needed one. I mm-hmm. think everyone can benefit from them, including myself. But um, And then I actually started looking at business models and things like that. Uh, second semester of my first year, I started reaching out to doctors and kind of figuring out the business model. I come from a business background a little bit. I did medical sales prior prior to dental school. So Oh wow, that really set you up, I bet. Yeah, it was a nice background to be familiar with it at least. Mm-hmm. So were you uh, kind of heading in a certain direction, like you wanted to become an associate first or did you even consider, you know, just doing a de novo startup or acquisition right out of school? Yeah, I actually, so I I wanted to make sure, one thing I like about dentistry is there are so many routes to go. Um, our school focuses a lot on community health, so I pursued community health for a little bit. I, I pursued, I even looked into um, you know, Pacific, Aspen, Heartland, those types, types of corporations, um, private practice, starting my own, buying in, all of the above. I even looked into specializing, and then I wanted to make sure that my door could be open to do a specialty, whether it was a GPR, AGD, or a residency of some kind. Um, but then in the middle of my third year, I actually almost bought a practice and I was going to run that practice remotely. Um, and it was really, gonna, yeah. So that's crazy. Well, yeah, towards, yeah, a little bit like the, the middle half of the second semester of my third year. Um, one of the fourth year students was moving to Spokane, Washington, 
where he's from and there was an opportunity that he was going to take, but he didn't want to miss out on another opportunity. And we had it all figured out where we were going to have two doctors run the practice that I was going to purchase with him. And then day one coming out of school, I was just going to run the practice, but also thought about that one quite a bit. And I didn't want to put that extra piece on me during my fourth year when I knew I would get the most clinical experience. I wanted to really be able to focus on becoming a better dentist rather than trying to jump into business while I was yeah. in school. So pulled out of that one as well, but that was, that was on my docket. So yeah, I kind of explored everything and, and made sure to be ready for anything that could come my way. Right. So, okay. I really, I, I've heard like some people talk about that where they go and they purchase a practice while they're still in dental school. How exactly does that work? Are you, so you go to the bank and you take out a practice loan, but you don't have like a license yet. So how can you kind of break that down for me, how that works? Yeah. So how it was going to work is myself and that fourth year who was just graduating, we were going to go into it together and he was going to be the practicing doctor that would work part time there. And then we had another doctor that was going to work part time, but I was going to be the overseeing business partner until I graduated. So I've heard of cases where people will, will practice where they do it without having a license. And some states, from my understanding, you don't need a license to own and run a dental practice. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's the piece of it. But my, my situation was a little bit of, I was going to run it from afar, but he was going to be the practicing doctor. And then once I became a doctor, I would just take over that role and take it over completely. That's awesome. So um, that fourth year that you were talking about, he would kind of like phase out and you would go to like 100% ownership? Yep, exactly. So, yep, yeah. so once I graduated, I would just move up there and take it over and be the new doctor. That's awesome. That's unbelievable. Now, Doc, so you talked about what you like, you prepared yourself to not have to do some sort of GPR. What advice do you have on what, like, what did you do to enable yourself to be confident enough to come out and just the ground running rather than applying for GPRs? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing that was helpful for me is I was, I tried to be as much of a sponge as possible in the sense that I would literally go up to every specialist at our school, especially the ones that I really got to know well, and I would just pick their brain about everything, you know, everything top down, you know, I'd go talk to the endodontist and catch the info, hey, what do you do in this situation? I would ask him about how to retreat just in case ever that came around, came around. Um, the oral surgeons, you know, every specialist you could find, and I would talk to them. And then I would also make sure to always be a yes man. So every time that a doctor came up to me and said, hey, do you want to do this case? I would say yes. And a lot of times I would say yes before I even heard what the case was. Right. <laughs> Just because it was a situation where, you know, once they gain the trust in you, they're going to push some things at you and then they're going to notice that you're someone that's willing to put in the effort and time. So you almost do a mini residency um, in itself if you can kind of get those experiences. And then we have we have rotations where we go to community health centers during our fourth year at my school. Right. Um, and you do one month at a time. And on those rotations, I would, I mean, I would tell them whatever you got, throw my way. So I would just do everything they had, which was great. And I just tried to push myself. So I would be seeing, you know, 10, 12 patients a day on those rotations, just trying oh, to push. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So it was helpful. But that's, I mean, you just got to be a yes man and you got to go out there and get the info. It's my. Yeah. So I know I went to, um, this is AT still, right? So did you end up going anywhere crazy? Because it's like you have to do like five uh, rotations. Is that correct? Right. Yep. Four to five. Yep. Did you go to Alaska? No, they. I was so <laughs> fun. <laughs> I wanted to go to Alaska so bad, but they only allowed it for one. Long story short, no, I did not go to Alaska. I really wanted to, but yeah. I went to Southern Oregon, uh, Idaho, Wisconsin, and then I had two of them in the Phoenix area. Yeah. So is there anything that you kind of, um, during dental school, is there anything that you kind of felt like you were being drawn towards, like some either clinically that you preferred or something in business, something that you found out that you liked uh, because of like a certain experience that you had? Yeah, I think my, I love getting patients out of pain. So I think I had a natural draw to extractions and root canals. Um, I love doing uh, crowns and, and fixed props, but I've always had a natural draw to business and that's just always been, it's kind of a puzzle to me and it's enjoyable. So the dentistry stuff, I mean, I would say 
oral surgery, endo, and fixed pros, I had a real draw to. Right. Um, but, and then, so I, I love, I mean, there's not really anything in dentistry I don't like, but I really do, I think the business side gets overlooked, and I, I am glad that I like and appreciate the business side. Right. I, I mean, totally feel you on that one. We, uh, all of us here, we're pretty involved in the business club. And, you know, that's kind of like why we started the podcast. We're just trying to learn more, talk to people. We had a lawyer on, we were talking about business, uh, dental law, uh, acquisition, stuff like that. We just, we want to, you know, help our listeners learn as well. So what, um, what kind of resources did you find helpful in dental school? I know you said, uh, you would, you know, have the doctors that were, uh, teaching at the school, you'd go up to them and just ask them questions. But you know, we don't have that resource really for business. So, what did you find helpful in dental school? Exactly what you're doing. So, I would reach out to, I would listen to podcasts, and then anytime that I felt like it was someone who I really respected or appreciated and things like that, I would reach out to them if they had a contact info. Um, so, I would listen to podcasts and reach out, and then I would just pick their brain about everything. And so, you're doing it, you know right up front because you're getting the people to come talk to you and you can ask everything you want. Um, whereas I would just do this without the recording basically. So I would reach out to people. I would contact people. I mean, I would, I would talk to, um, like the Henry shine reps and things like mm -hmm. that to kind of catch what they, they were seeing. And I really focused on demographics. I feel like so many people complain about saturation and all that. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Demographic is someone who I really focused on. Um, and I would, I was a frequent listener of his weekly webinar. Um, and that's a really good tip. I would recommend that one. You said that was Dr. Demographic. That was the name of it. Yeah. Dr. Demographic. And I'm spacing on the name of the guys, but they are super helpful and they do everything from, I mean, they do everything for demographics. I'll look it up right now, but yeah. So those would be my biggest tips for finding out. Awesome. You got to connect and network and you guys are doing a great job. So. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So, um, did you ever really like, so did you start planning out your practice while you were in school? I, I'm assuming that you, you know, of course you thought about, did you think about, uh, you know, what you would use for marketing, what you would use for, uh, your business systems? Did you kind of outline it at all while you were in school or did you kind of wait until after you got your license? I looked into everything. I was looking into stuff, uh, real early on too, but I also knew that trends were going to change. But yeah, I looked into planning out, you know, I would listen to podcasts and they would talk about just maximizing your space and making sure that the table is also a drawer so you don't have to have two separate things to get in the way. So you then you can shrink the building, you know, right. those kinds of things, marketing, um, how to keep patients, how to get patients and how to have them stay happy and things like that. And a big piece of it that I always wanted to focus on and another reason why I really wanted to get a lot of experience was the more you can feel comfortable keeping under one roof, the happier the patients are. And it also turns into revenue um, because you can do the root now, the crown, the post and the, you know, everything else. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's exactly, you know, what we're all trying to look for too. <laughs> so, um, so, you told us that you had some exciting news. I know you said you've had some big changes going on in your life. So kind of walk us through after you graduated from dental school and then up to now, I know, you, you know, made some big changes. So what's going on? Yeah. So I was in uh, Salt Lake City for the first three months of practice uh, working with a group out there that uh, turned into a situation I, I chose to resign and I moved out to Des Moines, Iowa, where I'm working with Dr. Stephanie Mohan, who I actually met through a podcast. And that's how really? I met her. Yeah. And, and uh, so I'm working out there. I've been working here for a week now. And it's been truly the best decision that I've made. I mean, it's early on in my career, but it's been the best decision. It's a great group, great values, great. Uh, her business aspect on everything is so much higher than a lot of people that I speak with. Um, and the, the team is just unbelievable. So, and it, it, it fit all my check boxes for what I'm looking for in a practice and location and everything right. else. Okay. So what are you looking for in a practice? Oh, ooh, 
I am looking for somebody who's a little bit more cutting edge, who's who's willing to put in the extra effort, who is, um, I want a practice that is available to the patient and follows good values. And that's, I mean, my values might be different than someone else's, but mm -hmm. um, I also want, so I want somebody who can teach me things and everyone can teach you stuff, but I want someone who's got a, a wealth of knowledge that can really pass that on and is willing to pass it on because sometimes you'll meet someone that knows everything in the book, but they oftentimes don't want to share that in a sense, or they just are so focused on the business aspect or the dental side that they just almost don't have time to share that. Right. So I want someone who can truly mentor me, but also cut me loose a little bit and, and let me get in the fire. Cause that's the, the quickest way to learn. I feel is if you just get thrown in the fire, but mentor was big to me, good financial opportunity, good place to raise a family. I mean, there were a lot of check boxes that I had. Dr. J, it sounds like uh, you got a lot of things going for you right now. Um, you, you have this opportunity where you're being taught well, but at the same time, you're being given the freedom to, you know, kind of like learn on your own and uh, dabble in what you want to dabble in. So I just wanted to ask you, even though you're only a week into working for this uh, new partnership, have you learned anything or have you experienced anything that you haven't experienced since you've gotten out of dental school that has kind of just been uh, something that you'll, you'll keep in your memory for quite some time, a learning lesson or just something that you uh, have really just enjoyed to see? Yeah, absolutely. Do you, from Des Moines in particular or in practice in general? Um, I, I met over this uh, in Des Moines, but even in practice in general, it would be cool too. Des Moines has been uh, very helpful, and I think in this week they're they're doing me part time with the the main practice and part time in a practice on my own. So the experience that I'm learning already with with codes and things like that, a piece that is probably simple to a lot of more seasoned doctors, but that's stuff that I need to learn. So learning the codes, learning the overhead, learning how to run the business, you know everything in between there and running a, a practice truly by myself and getting everyone involved on the same page. I mean, that's only three days in with that practice, but it's, it's so useful to, to run a practice on your own and be the only doctor on site and truly know that if something goes wrong, it's you, you're the one that's getting yourself out of it. So that's been useful. I think that, that one thing that was really useful that I've learned already too, I think it's very beneficial. I contact every patient, um, by text or phone call, any patient that I get numb, I contact them either that night or the next day and just touch base with them. So I think that's something that I would recommend to anyone because patients, that goes such a long way with them. I completely yeah, agree. Absolutely. I, I think that's a wonderful uh, attribute to have with your patients because it shows the personality and and the, the level of care is just to another, you know, another dimension that certain people don't try to achieve for. So that's definitely something that we could take in and try to uh, use in our future practices. So thank that's, you. That's really desirable bedside manner too. You don't really hear of that as much. I mean, if I go to the dentist, you have worked on it or whatever. I can't remember the last time I got called from the yeah. dentist the, not, that, the night of or the morning after. Right. And that's, I think it goes a long way with the patients and it's just a good way to let them know that you're there. Right. So did you, um, did for this new practice, did you enter into a partnership or are you working as an associate or how did you kind of transition? Yeah, it's an associate with a uh, chance to buy in. And right now it's perfect for me. She offers CE. She, she puts you in a position to run a practice by yourself and kind of learn the business side and um, she has in-house CE, which is really nice. And she's always there. She's always available. I could text her right now and she would let me, you know, she would answer whatever question I had. So, and she also works in the practice. So I get to see how she treats patients because the, the community loves her and whatever she has done has worked. You know right. what I mean? So I, it's, it's got everything that I, that I wanted. It's, it's a great, it's a great fit. So did you, um, when you transitioned in, did she have enough patients? Was that something you were concerned about when you started or? Uh, so fortunately, <laughs> fortunately and unfortunately, I had kind of a, I had a exposure to being a new doctor on a, a site and I didn't have, I had expectations that were set to a level based off of that experience in Salt Lake. And the expectations I had were actually pretty low going into this Des Moines practice and oh, <laughs> she exceeded everything. I mean, I have a completely full schedule. I am like booked to the brim today. I was seeing patients nonstop out in that practice. Um, 
and tomorrow's going to be the same thing. I looked at the schedule. So there's no lack of patience. She markets like crazy, which is great. She's, I mean, she's getting everybody on board and patients are already scheduling everything with me. So I, I have no lack of patience with, with this practice. These aren't bad problems to have right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you sound like you're in the best possible position. You transition from something, you know, not exactly what you wanted into, you know, potentially what could turn out to be like your dream job over here in Des Moines. That's that's truly wonderful. But uh, so, Dr. J, you were uh, talking about CEs and how uh, the practice owner offers it and everything. Are you looking into any CEs right now like that you would want to do that you think would be extremely beneficial towards your development as a dentist and a, like a, just an overall practice, practitioner? I was just thinking that question. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah, it's a question that everybody thinks about. But um, I think that every CE course is beneficial in some way. If I had to say which ones I'm after right now, it would be implants. I want to get a lot better at um, implants so I can really offer so much more to my patients. You know, everything from dentures over implants to just single unit implants and things like that so that's the one i'm going after uh very soon and that's the one i'll pursue but i i mean occlusion's a good one and uh, it depends on what you're really interested in and you all will notice that too once you get going which ones you really want to get better at or which pieces you feel lacking and that's the ones that you'll pursue but i think implants is the one i'll go after right now Right. So is that uh, implant pathway or which one are you thinking about going to? So implant pathway is a great one. And I've considered going to that one. This doctor, she puts you into a CE course for implant. So I'm going to go to that one. It's, <laughs> it's in uh, Kansas City. And then she we also just hired a new or we're in the process of possibly getting a, a new doctor. And he is CE accredited. And he said he'll he'll teach me his course as well. Um, so. I'll do that one as well. I mean, the more education, the better. Oh yeah. So he's gonna give you it for the uh, for the low low free CE. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see about that. I don't know what'll happen. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's great. Um, so since we're on the the topic of implants, so that is that really like um, tell tell me more about like your uh, clinical procedure mix. All right, so you're trying to transition more towards implants. Is there anything else that uh, you do a lot every single day. Is there something else besides implants you're looking into? For CE credits? Uh, no, just for your everyday uh, clinical procedure mix at your practice. Uh, right now, I think the real reason that I want implants is just so I can give that extra option. And when I give that option, I can actually follow through with doing that option. Um, but I do, I mean, I do a lot of, um, basic i mean fill and drill that's going to be everywhere and then crowns extractions root canals so and everything in between removable pros is is here and there it's not as frequent and i think that has a lot to do with people wanting fixed dentures now right right so I, that's and i think that's that's the real piece of the pie that i'm missing out on right now um and i know i need to get better at everything and i'm not saying i'm like this wizard of dentistry because i'm not but I do know that implants would be a helpful piece for me to be able to throw in with everything else. Right. So, um, cause we all just, you know, we're in RPD right now in the class. So what, um, how do you feel about doing removable? Like, do you feel confident doing it in practice or? Yeah, I actually, I really do like removable. Um, and I think it's such a nice, the one thing I, there are a couple of things I like about it. I like that you get to know the patient a little bit more because you're sitting down next to them and you're able to chat to them because so much of it is outside of the mouth. Um, and then I think it's nice because the before and afters are life changing to the patient. Yeah. The issue I have with removable is it's not always comfortable for the patient and they're always, you know, especially full dentures and full lower dentures, they're just never really happy with them. And I think that's why I want to be able to give them kind of the Cadillac version of the venture because I don't want them to, to leave unhappy, you know what I mean? And I don't want them to have to spend more money later, waste money long term. But Yeah, yeah. So um, if, you, if you're right now, I would assume the first step in doing implants, learning implants is uh, learning how to do the single unit implants, right? Just replacing one tooth and one missing space. So uh, you know, you're much farther ahead than we are. So what's kind of your timeline that you're expecting 
that you can actually be able to confidently do like all on force? So do you think like after maybe a year of doing CEs or maybe two years or what, what is your uh, key estimation? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty hopeful that it'll be six to 12 months. And the reason I say that is because that was one nice thing that Salt Lake practice, they had a doctor who he showed the possibilities of really putting in the time he he did ce courses and he's only three years out of dental school and he's placing all on four all on six and he's he was doing that his first year out so that's awesome i think he made it more uh possible and i mean he was a great dentist so that's i'm hoping six to 12 months from now i'll be placing for sure single plant uh single implants i'll be placing those soon and then all on fours i'm hoping at least or at most 12 months from now I have no doubt you'll probably be doing it within 12 months. Absolutely. That's, that is uh, that is cool. How long do these CE courses typically take? Is there a time frame for these? Uh, they can be weekend courses. I know that that implant pathways, I don't remember how many days that is, but I know they hit it pretty hard when you, when you go to that course. But oftentimes they're weekend courses, but there can be phases. So you'll have like the first phase the weekend and then phase two when you learn about this portion phase three so it can be spread out spread out over a few weekends but and i think you can go to week-long courses but that's more of a commitment in my opinion but some of those courses are really good too right um so we were actually we're at a perio meeting yesterday and we met with dr russo who does uh he's he's on the board of trustees for like the southeastern district for uh Periodontology. Yeah, for periodontology. And he was talking about uh, doing the X-Guide implants. Have you heard about that? I That's, have not heard of that one. What is that? It's like the one where, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it though. It's it's like, uh, they have like QR codes that are on the handpiece and then there's cameras set up. And then you're while you're like placing the implant, uh, it kind of, it's like tracking your handpiece, like the angulation and distance and it, it's basically what what is it it's called ct well he was doing it's like a real-time ct that oh. that measures everything as it goes on a computer so you get to watch where you're going the angulation and yeah. it has a target like targeting system almost on the screen so all you have to do is align the drill where it, like the, the computer says to and then drill in at that point and it shows if you're deviating or not so you get a, it's almost like a computerized stem oh wow that makes it that's the CE course for you right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was, uh, yeah, he said like he's got computers and all over the place. You've, you've got cameras above the patient and then you've got like like a scanner below to, so that way it picks up all the stuff. Plus you got the, the CT running. He said it was like super, super. Yeah, it's like uh, accurate intense. within 200 microns or something like that. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. But yeah, that's called X-Guide uh, implants. I, I don't even know how much that system uh, would be to like implement into your practice. I don't know. You'd have to out re outfit like your whole operatories and stuff. He, he said that there was uh, two companies that do it. One company makes one for like a stationary, where it's, it's a big computer monitor, and then there's one that's done off a lot like a laptop that you can transport in a car if you take it from office to office and do oh. it that way. So he said it all depends on what you want out of your system. He said if you want to leave it in your office and like one operatory is like like a surgical suite. He said you'd get the one with the monitor because it's you know more in tune to not having to transport or whatever. It's bigger, larger, to and more convenient to use rather than having to package it and everything like you would for the laptop version. That is crazy. I bet it's extremely inexpensive. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, let's let's talk a little bit more about what you're learning from the the new doctor that you just started working with. Um, so. Let's just kind of run through each a couple of the systems in your practice. Um, so, from your experience so far, what do you think is one of the most important leadership qualities that you've seen this doctor or any doctor per se have in running their team? Uh, I think just basic human respect, and I think that that goes such a long way. And people don't realize, like, you know, I watch and a simple thank you from her to one of the assistants goes such a long way. And I think that treating, treating everybody as an equal is, is a really important piece and putting the right people for leadership roles and, and making sure that they're in the position that's appropriate for them and not overstepping or understepping somebody's potential and, and things like that. So I think that just, I think basic human respect is a, a really important piece that I've noticed is great. 
just to roll off that question, have you had to deal with someone in um, either your practices where maybe one of uh, your colleagues has not been the most uh, friendly or personable um, colleague where you had to try to work your way around them or you had to try to talk to them on the side and say, hey, like we need to do things better? Have you ever had to deal with that kind of situation in, in your career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have. And that's, I mean, I think you're going to get that anywhere you go. And I think that's just part of the territory in life. I think that's, I mean, you walk down the hall and you might have to deal with something like that. But I think, uh, yeah, I definitely have had to deal with that. Do you have any advice with uh, approaching that? I think I think the biggest thing is being, you know, respectful and, and taking the problem head on. But you also got to do it in a manner that isn't going to be degrading to somebody else. So you, like pulling them aside and talking to them, it's, it's, there's a book about it and it, they're kind of four quadrants and you want to land in the, I can't remember the words for it, but you basically want to be able to, with everybody that you talk to, it's actually nicer to tell someone, Hey, you have something in your teeth, but you pull them aside to do that. You don't embarrass them in front of everybody else because then that's a different situation. So I think it's, you go back to that and if something's, you know, going awry and you need to talk to them, it's best to just pull them aside and say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. This is, you know, maybe how we could approach it and just talk it out because if they don't know about it, you're just assuming stuff and that's not going to help out and they're never going to change anything. They may not change anyways, but at least now you all are on the same page. So I think it goes back to that, that it's actually nicer to let someone know, but you got to pull them aside. Do you remember the name of that book? <laughs> Uh, off the top of my head, I don't, but I could get it for you and I'll send it yeah. to you. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. So, uh, that's leadership skills. How about, um, how about marketing? You said this new dentist is doing a lot of marketing. What kind of marketing does she do? Uh, she does email flyers and everything in between. And then I think that one piece that gets overlooked, especially with doctors that you all are going to join, um, I think that social media is such a big thing that people don't tap into as much as they should. And I think that it's a really nice thing for younger dentists coming into it to really get going with their social media presence. Because if you can have a good, I, if you can have a good presence on that, that's how people will find you. And that's how they're going to start coming to you and tell their friends about it. You know, if you have a presence, that's what they want to be a part of too. And I think that if you can get good reviews on online, that's a huge piece if you can you know, show up first when someone searches dentist in my area. So that's those are the things that I feel are most important, especially for new dentists coming out. And that's why I really started my social media presence. I think that there's such a big piece of patience that can be found that way. Right. So have you started on like uh, Google reviews? Because I mean, that's probably one of the biggest ones, especially, you know, you Google dentist in my area or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and I always, if, if a patient has a really good experience with me, I say, if you want, feel free to write a review and they'll hop on and write a review about me. Um, and then I always, if they have a good experience, I'm more likely to say, if you have any friends, refer them in. And I think one thing, um, word of mouth is so important. And that's one thing that I've learned. If your assistants aren't referring their family to come see you, then that's probably a problem. <laughs> right. Okay. That yeah, that's, that's probably not good. <laughs> so, so now conversely, like, what? How do you handle a uh, patient that that has very a very difficult patient has very high expectations that wants you know results that you know you know they're clinically unrealistic. Can't be, yeah, they, yeah, they clinically can't be delivered by anyone. You know, based off of what they what they're asking for. You know, like how do you deal with that? Have you come up with a plan or a system that you use? Yeah, I I that's another thing. I hit it head on. I think that the. I think one way just in, in something that I've noticed is really helpful is being transparent with them with everything. And I think patients appreciate that. And at the end of the day, if you got somebody that's coming in and they say they want something that's unrealistic and there's no way anybody could do it, you let them know what you can provide and you let them know where you could get them. But at the end of the day, sometimes you got to cut path or cut ties with that patient and let them know they should maybe try and find a different dentist because you don't want to put yourself in a situation because once you start doing some things like that, you're in a sense married to that patient, especially if it's a lot of cosmetic and aesthetic work and, and fixed and blah, blah, blah. So I think it's 
important to just be upfront and honest and, and tell them, you know, this is where we're going to get. And it's not always easy to, to, to let them know, you know, yeah, I know you want 12 veneers, but Hey, I'm only good enough to do four right now. So <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But, uh, and that's a bad example, but that's basically, <laughs> you just got to be blunt and transparent and mm -hmm. let them know where you can get them. And if that's what they want to do, then, Make sure to have them sign off on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the respect that as well, like you develop a lot of respect from the patient by being honest with them and everything rather than, you know, trying to be deceitful. Yeah, exactly. And nothing is worse than having to dig yourself out of a hole. So you seem very straightforward with your patients, almost stoic like in a way. Um, is there any way that you you have learned to deal with the stress of um, managing an office? You know, it's one thing to deal with dental school stress, but when you're actually out there in the real world, dealing with uh, things day in, day out. Is there something that you've that you've learned or acquired uh, so far that's helped you get through, uh, you know, the day by day? Yeah, I, that's without even thinking about it, I think it's a situation where especially now I've been thrown into a position where I am I'm busy and I'm going and I'm moving. I don't even have time to really think about the issues of it. I just have to kind of work quickly and, and get things done. And I think like everything in my history, it's been nice to be thrown in the fire. And I think that's been the best way for me to just deal with it is just get in there and do it. And I, it, it's, that's probably my best thing for me. And that's how I've been able to, to manage and, and deal with all of the changes and everything that's going on. It's been nice to just truly get going and really learn and produce and those kinds of things. Absolutely. Right. So, so far, uh, between dental school and outside of dental school, what's kind of like one of the more challenging times you've had uh, in your career so far in dentistry? And so also, of course, how did you overcome it? <laughs> I, my, my worst experience in dentistry, hands down, was the experience I had um, at this previous job. And <laughs> how I dealt with it is I went home with my family every night and had a good time with them. Um, but at the end of the day, I resigned from it because it was something that I didn't want to be a part of. And, and it's, again, I was just transparent and, and blunt with the situation and, and stepped in one day and resigned. So, um, I knew the writing on the wall and I could see the writing on the wall and I didn't want to be a part of that. And I had brought up things that weren't changing and they weren't going to change. So... I, I felt it was best to to step away rather than beating a dead horse and, and those kinds of things. I just stepped away from it. So that's what I did. Dr. J, I kind of have like a two part question for you here. So you seem like a, a big family man, which is a great thing to be. Um, so the first question I wanted to ask you was, what is your goal setting process? How do you how do you go about it? Is it is it your family? Is it your your mental fortitude? Is it your disposition? Just exactly what is that? And then to kind of like bounce off that question with my second one, what would you say um, in your terms would be being successful for yourself? Um, yeah, those are good questions. I base everything I do off of my family and they always come first. And I let my, I let people I interviewed with, I let them know that up front too. I said, that's my number one. So everything I do is based off of them. Um, and, and that's kind of what motivates me too. And I've always just had a little bit of a natural drive just to kind of continue and, and just move forward and things like that. Um, but I think, I don't know, I've, I've always felt like there's kind of no choice, but to, create success. So that's one mental thing that's been helpful for me. Um, and being successful is so unique to everybody else. And, you know, myself, it, success is like the weirdest word. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> everything is so much different for everybody. But if I don't set up my family and put them in a good position, that's then I'm not successful. But, you know, you got to the people around you, if, if the people around you don't respect you and they don't, you know, aren't drawn to you. That's another form of respect. I mean, it's not all about money. It's, it's all about, you know, being happy and, and providing for the people that you care about. So I think that's something that has always been important to me. And that's part of what I feel is successful because at the end of the day, who's going to be next to me on my deathbed and it's probably not going to be some random person off the street. So. Exactly. That's a great answer. Absolutely. That was, that was, couldn't put it better. No, 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 no. <laughs> Couldn't. So, 
All right. So let's talk about the future. Um, what are some of your goals for the future? What are you looking forward to next? I know you said you're going to be looking towards implants. What else? What else are you looking forward to? Uh, kind of five year, one year, five year, ten year down the road. And it doesn't it doesn't have to be dentistry either. It could be just personal goals, you know, family goals, whatever you uh, you're looking to, to shoot at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like to grow our family a little bit. That's that's one thing. And then I would like to really get involved in the community. That's something that's important to me. And and I would like to buy a home out here and things like that. Um, but as far as dentistry goes, I really want to own multiple practices within the next five years. And our plan is to purchase more practices. So I want to be a part of that and actually be involved in in a sense that, you know, I want to be a, a piece of the puzzle that really helps it to grow and then pushes us in a, in a better position to have more practices and continue growing so we can provide opportunities for other dentists and things like that. So I want to be I want to be someone that, that people want to come to for help and someone that, that people feel um, they want to emulate that person. So that's kind of a, a long-term goal for dentistry. Right. That sounds awesome. That is, this has been a great interview. It really yeah. has. So we really appreciate you uh, spending time to talk to us about all this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on this, truly. And feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you, Dr. J. We really appreciate that. You you sound like you found a home in Des Moines out there, and uh, we, we couldn't be more happy for you. You sound very blessed, and this was truly a remarkable experience for all four of us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, Dr. J, do you have a, a social that our uh, loyal followers can find you at? Yeah, uh, like an Instagram or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, an Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be Dr. Brian Jankowski, so D-R-B-R-I-A-N-J-A-N-K-O-W. SKI. Awesome. So all of our listeners out there, I'm sure you guys enjoyed this interview. Make sure to follow Dr. J at doc at Dr. Brian Jankowski. And you just heard him spell it, so I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> but uh, all right, well, this has been a great experience. Uh, we really appreciate having you and we look forward to hoping we, we are hoping to talk to you again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Reach out anytime and that's, you know, feel free. I'm always open to answer any questions for you. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, All right, guys. Have a good one. All right. That was an awesome interview with Dr. Brian Jankowski. Thanks, Dr. Jankowski, for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, thank you to all of our listeners. We really appreciate your support. We cannot do it without you guys. Um, as always, click that subscribe button, uh, share with your friends, and follow us on Instagram at dental.student.vibes. Again, thanks for listening, and until next time.